Well, I don't know what I'm supposed to say after that. Amen. Uh, what a tremendous day, and it's so good to be in God's house and to be able to have a special day to think about our mothers and what they mean to us. Uh, today, I want to make a comparison that I think will help us to understand God's love for us, and in order to do that, I want to begin by reading a poem, uh, and it's entitled, Thank God for Mother's Love. There is no love like a mother's love, no stronger bond on earth like the precious bond that comes from God to a mother when she gives birth. A mother's love is forever strong, never changing for all time, and when her children need her most, a mother's love will shine. God bless these special mothers. God bless them, every one, for all the tears and heartache and for the special work that they've done. When her days on earth are over, a mother's love lives on through many generations with God's blessings on each one. Be thankful for our mothers, for they love with a higher love from the power God has given and the strength from up above. And I'm, I'm telling you this morning, there is nothing that you can compare to a mother's love. It's, it's one of the most beautiful, genuine things here on this earth. And I want to make a comparison about uh, between a mother's love and God's divine love for us. You see, a mother's love for her child is one of the most beautiful things that God has ever created. It comes from God. A mother did not originate her love for her child. It came directly from God. God is the source of all love. He is the fountain from which all love flows. So it's no wonder that a mother's love is similar to God's love. You see, if we want to talk about God's love, we can call it by many things, but let's use the term divine love this morning. Divine love, or godly love, is the love that God loves with. It's represented to us in the Bible by the word agape in the New Testament. And that word agape is used 320 times in the New Testament, talking about God's divine love toward us. Now, this is a different word than all the other English words translated from the original language, love. This word is very special that talks about God's love. It's based on the will of God. Not on God's emotions. This is a decision uh, that God makes to love us. That's what I was talking about in the introduction in the worship thought today. Is that God decided before the world ever began to love you. No matter what. And isn't that the way a mother's love is? A mother's love, it starts when uh, that baby is conceived and there's the thought of a new baby arriving in the home and that mother begins to love that baby and that child before it's ever even born. And I, I've seen many mothers when they were pregnant uh, speaking to the baby and listening uh, to music with the baby and even reading them stories uh, before they're born because a mother's love begins in the womb. It begins before the baby's even born. And God's love is that way with us. And I've noticed that it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, unfortunately, there are things that happen because of the curse of sin. And there are uh, disabilities and difficulties sometimes with the birth. And, and sometimes the child doesn't uh, come out physically exactly the way uh, that the family would want because of curse, uh, the curse of sin. And, but I, I know that uh, all mothers, when they see that child being born, it doesn't matter what they look like. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter if they have abilities or disabilities. That mother loves that that child. Now, I don't have the thing that mothers have. I don't think that all babies are beautiful. I'm sorry. Some of them are not. And you, you have to be very careful as a preacher. When you go to the hospital and they show you the baby, and you're like, whoa. But it doesn't matter what the baby looks like. The mother loves the child. It doesn't matter how smart the child is. It doesn't matter how gifted the child is. Have you ever talked to a mom about her kid? You would think that they were the, the superstar of the world. And then you look at the child and you go, wait, wait. Are you talking about him? Is that your kid? You see, a mother's love is unconditional. 
if we're going to talk about divine love and, and a biblical God-given love, we can go nowhere else in the New Testament but to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. So join, there, join me there in 1 Corinthians in your Bibles, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And I want to show you what divine love looks like and how we compare, and there's so many similarities, between God's love for us and a mother's love for her child. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and I'm going to begin reading in verse 4. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. Now, the Bible here uses the word charity because that is a very specific word in the English language, and this word is actually uh, means and carries the connotation of a full and a, a complete love. And so the word charity there is used uh, as our word for love. So charity suffereth long. You know what that means? It understands, and therefore it is patient. Now think about that with me for a minute, just as mothers love their children. Number one, you guys, ladies, you have some kind of ability that's given from God to understand what these little kids are saying. I don't possess that ability. And so when little two-year-olds or three-year-olds or whatever come up to me or even smaller than that, they come up and they go, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I got no idea what you're saying, son. And the mom comes over and goes, oh, well, what he said is this and this and this. Moms understand their child. They just, not only on a, a language level, but they understand. My wife was so amazing with our kids. When they were little, she would hear their cry, and she'd go, oh, this is what needs to happen. We're in the other room. How in the world can she know what's wrong with the baby from the other room just because they cried a certain way? All of that sounded like racket to me. I thought it was all the same. My wife knew what was going on. She knew what the babies needed. She knew all these different things. She was an expert at getting them to go to sleep. I was trying to do something, not really hard. I'll be honest with you. When the kids were little bitty babies, I didn't try real hard to be a help, but I did try. And so some of you men know what I'm talking about. And so in the middle of the night, you know, I was always asleep. When the babies woke up, I was asleep. Or if I wasn't, I was pretending to be asleep. And so my wife would get up with the baby, and she could put them back to sleep. And, man, I, I tried to do something. So I said, all right, I'm going to put Kirsten to sleep every night. I'm going to help her go to sleep. And that girl, she to this day cannot sleep very well. It takes her forever to go to sleep. And it, didn't, it wasn't any better when she was a baby. And so I would go in there, and I had this big old long process. took like an hour and a half to get her to bed. And then somebody would make a noise, any noise. And then we'd start the whole process over. But moms have an unbelievable, uncanny understanding about their child. And when they understand the child, then they have patience with it. Unbelievable patience. I do not possess that either. Our kids, when they were little, they would come into the kitchen or wherever we were at, and they'd go, Mommy, 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 Mommy. And just a thousand times, I'm like, shut up! <laughs> I'm going to show you, Mommy. <laughs> but mothers don't do that. They have this unbelievable patience with their kids. Notice what the Bible says. Charity suffereth long and is kind. It's, it's kind. It's, it's gentle. You know, uh, sometimes to the detriment, if that's the part of the problem, and, and I don't mean to get off track today, but that's probably part of the problem with our society today is that only we have so many single moms that are raising kids, and there's no dad in the influence in the home, and the mom is kind and gentle to a detriment sometimes because women have such a hard time being a disciplinarian, or, or even just getting on to the kids sometimes. They just love them so much, and, oh, they're just so cute, and my wife would say that, and I'm be like, yeah, but they need a whooping. <laughs> Suffereth long and is kind. A charity envieth not. It vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. It's not prideful. There's not full of self-esteem. You know what was amazing? And I knew this was going to happen, so I didn't have any doubts about using this in as, as an example today. Every single mom that stood up was like, 
real sheepish and shy about it. They don't want to be celebrated. They don't. They, and I know that some of you are like, well, wait, no, I was fine with that. But for the most part, if you really try to really honor your mom or you try to really say some nice things or you really try to lift her up or something like that, most moms will not want you to do that. They're just like, well, I just did the best I could, and I, I didn't do everything right, and, and, and they have those kind of ideas. They're not puffed up. They're not braggadocious. They're not standing around going, yeah, I was the best mom ever. Now, there's been some dads that have done that, <laughs> you know. I mean, when I finally got my coffee mug that says super dad, best dad ever, I was like, kids, it's about time. <laughs> Where has this been? <laughs> But a mother's love is not puffed up. It's not full of pride. The Bible says, verse 5, doth not behave itself unseemly. Now, I love this. A mother's love doesn't behave itself unseemly is what the Bible says, but it just means it's not rude. It's not, it has good manners. Where do all the good manners that we instill kids come from? They come from the moms. I ain't any, hardly any dad, maybe one out of a million dads in here that is going to instill good manners in the kid. Why? Because you don't have good manners. That's why. Men are, well, they're just crude. They're rude. They're obnoxious. I are one. I know. As a matter of fact, the moms have to uninstall all the bad manners that the men put into them. I'll never forget when, our, when Kirsten was a little bitty girl. I mean, she was probably maybe a year and a half, two years old. Her uncle, and I won't name his name because they may watch this later. <laughs> one of her uncles taught her to go... <laughs> and so we were on deputation going around to churches as missionaries. And I could just see it playing out. Preacher's at the, at the IHOP with us, and he says, Oh, hey, hello, she's such a cute little girl. Hey, isn't she lovely? And you guys are raising a great kid. <laughs> I was like, that was going to be the end of our travels. We're not ever going to get to the mission field like that. So what do the moms do? They take all those bad manners, and they try to fix it. <laughs> because their love is not... Behaving itself unseemly. It's not crude. It's not rude. It's not something that has bad manners. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Boy, I'm telling you one thing. It's amazing to me a mother's love for her child and how much she will sacrifice for that child. Getting up at all hours of the night. Women that have had small children and they've never had, you know, they don't worry about a new dress. They don't worry about a purse. They don't worry about their car. They don't worry about anything. All they're worried about is the good of the, and the welfare of that child. And they will sacrifice anything for the betterment of that child. It's an amazing thing. It's so unselfish and so uh, not self-satisfying. It is something that is absolutely amazing. You know, and they, I, I know that mothers have this uh, connection with their child and they do receive something from that child and they do receive love back. But even when that child gets up and grows up and walks out of that house on the mom, they still sacrifice and they still give and they still give of everything they have for the betterment of that child. And it's absolutely amazing. The closest thing on this earth to divine love from God the Father. It's absolutely the closest thing on this earth to divine love. Now watch this. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked. <laughs> now some of you ladies may go, well, now you were doing good, preach until right there. But if we compare how easily provoked you are to the men and other people in this world, you have a lot of patience. And I know that you have a lot of frustrations raising kids. I do know that. But let me tell you, a, a mother that has godly love in her for her child is not easily provoked. It's amazing what kids can do, even in rebellion to their mom. And the mom still loves them and loves them and takes care of them and sacrifices for them. It's an amazing thing. 
the Bible says, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. You know what that phrase in the Bible means? It means that there's, they don't hold a grudge. They're not uh, thinking evil about somebody. And a, a mom is an amazing person where she will have anything from her kids. And, you know, they're younger, I understand. And maybe they're going through teenage years or, or the terrible twos or whatever it may be. And, and there's things that happen and there's things that are done. They don't, the child may not mean to do that, may not mean to hurt the mom's uh, heart. But there are things that are done by children on purpose. And it's an amazing thing that a mom can just forgive. And just not hold a grudge about her kids. There's amazing things that have happened in mothers' lives, but their children re rebelling against them or even doing terrible things to them, stealing from them, all kinds of things that you'll hear about. And a mother can just keep on loving that child and keep on loving that child and not holding a grudge. I truly think that a mother's love for her child is the closest thing on this earth to God's divine love for us. You see, every single one of these points that we've talked about is also true about God's love for you. You see, God's love for you is not puffed up. It's not a prideful love. It is a sacrificial love. It's unconditional. It does not hold a grudge. Can you imagine if God held a grudge against us? Every time you sin, God said, Oh, I knew it. There it is again. No, God's love is not like that. You see, divine love and a mother's love gives of itself for the welfare of the child and or, in God's case, for us. Years ago, a young mother was making her way across the hills of South Wales, carrying her tiny little baby in her arms. When she was overtaken in that moment by a blizzard, a snowstorm, she never reached her destination alive. And when the blizzard had subsided, her body was found beneath the snow. But the searchers discovered that before her death, she had taken off all her outer clothing and wrapped it around her baby. And when they unwrapped the child, to their great surprise and joy, they found he was alive and well. She had given her life for her child, proving the depth of a mother's love. Years later, that child, David Lloyd George, grown to manhood, became prime minister of Great Britain and without doubt one of England's greatest statesmen. Yeah, there's story after story after story of a mother giving her life for a child. And you know, that's the same comparison that we have with our Heavenly Father. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God the Father loved you so much that He gave His only Son to die on the cross in your place for all of your sins. And in doing that, made a way. He is the way. Jesus Christ is the way and the only way for you to get your sins forgiven and to make things right between you and a heavenly Father and to have eternal life given to you. You don't earn it. You don't work for it. You don't become a church member for it. You are given salvation. It's a free gift. But it, isn't, it wasn't free for the Savior. It cost him his life. And so we believe from the Bible that God the Father loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross in our place, was buried and rose again the third day as proof that he is the son of God and he can give us eternal life. And that's what we call the gospel. And the gospel only plays out in our lives because of God's unconditional love for you. All these things that we've talked about about a mother's love are there in so much more when we consider God's love toward us. But you know, there's a difference between a mother's love and God's love. You see, a mother's love is temporary. At one point in a mother's life, she's going to pass on from this life. At one point... Uh, there is a beginning 
to the love a mother has for her child. But you see, God's love for us is eternal. It's from the very beginning and foundation of this world all the way through eternity and the future. God has a love for you that is eternal. Second difference that I see today between God's love and a mother's love is the fact that God's love is perfect. Now, we're celebrating mothers today, and I'm, I'm, I'm all for celebrating, and I, I'm, I can't wait to get uh, in my car as soon as this service is over. Now, listen, I'm not going to run out because I don't want to talk and fellowship and because I'm mad at y'all, but let me tell you, my whole family is down in Burleson at Boulevard Baptist Church this morning, and we're about to have a family reunion lunch for all the moms. My mother-in-law and my wife and my mom are all down there, and so as soon as I can get out of this service, we're going down there. I'm going to drive down there as fast as I legally can. And I enjoy getting to put my arm around my mom and tell her how much I love her. And I wish she was in the service today so I could say it publicly even more. And I'm amazed at my wife and what she's done for our kids. But let me tell you, they're not, hang on now, I don't want to be offensive, but they're not perfect. They have made some mistakes, and actually there's been times in every mother's life when they didn't love their child as much as they should have. But God's love is absolutely, completely perfect. It never misses the mark. It never takes a day off. God's love is perfect. Not only is it perfect and not only is it eternal, but God's love is different than a mother's love because a mother has love for her child, and God has love for everybody. God's love is all-encompassing. It's not just to one little baby. It's for everybody in here this morning. doesn't matter where you come from. doesn't matter what nationality you are. doesn't matter how much money you have or don't have. It doesn't matter how educated or not educated you are. It does not matter this morning. God's love is for everybody and those are the differences between God's love and a mother's love but let me tell you can't we get a little bit of an understanding of how much God loves us looking at a mother's love for her child it's a great comparison and like I said I think it's the best comparison we have of God's love here on earth is a mother's love for her child and I wanted to celebrate that love today and I wanted to help you all of you ladies feel very celebrated and what an impact that you make in our lives and we are so much the better for having our mothers and I hope that every single one of you that has your mother here or she is somewhere else I hope that you'll make a special effort to help her feel special and celebrated today as a church we want to make sure that that happens and not only uh, getting a little a flower here in the middle of the service but also as you leave we have a special gift for every mother that will be here in our in our service today so make sure that you get that gift when you leave but let me tell you there are some shortcomings of a mother's love and that is compared to God's love it's not perfect it's not eternal and it's not all encompassing God loves us with a love that we can't even understand And if you've never experienced that love of God, and you've never asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart and save you, I hope that today will be the day for you to be saved and to experience the love of God in your heart and help you to understand that God loves us unconditionally no matter what we do or say. On this special Mother's Day in celebration of our moms, I hope that you have experienced God's love in your heart so that you can compare a mother's love to divine love. The greatest thing I believe on, on the earth is a mother's love to the child, but does it even still compare to God's love for us? Would you stand with your heads bowed and your eyes closed? Every head bowed and every eye closed. Heavenly Father, we love you today, and God, we are so grateful for the love that you've shown to us. And God, I'm so grateful, so thankful that your love doesn't stop toward us if we make a mistake or if we sin or if we disappoint you or disobey you God I'm so glad that it's unconditional it's perfect it never misses a beat it never is not to the fullest it never is imperfect in any way and God it's eternal it'll last forever and it's for all people 
Lord, there's some people that have never felt true love in their lives. And I pray that if there's someone here that is in that condition today, Lord, that you'd help them to come in this invitation time and accept you as their personal Savior. And then they could experience the true love of God in their life. Would you help them to do that today? And I pray that you'd help each and every mother, each and every lady here today, that they would feel very special because we want to honor them. We want to celebrate their impact on our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.